Okay, so welcome. Welcome everybody to the course. I am Andrew McRae. I'll be teaching it. The course is Physics 325, that is optics. And optics is the study of light and how it propagates. So we have to really think about that. Light is a very familiar thing. Look around the room, pick up a book, look out the window. Everything you're seeing is the pattern of light that is detected on uh, an optical instrument known as your eye. And uh, it involves a lens and some detection, right? So, so this optics is something that is very, very familiar to everybody, but, but what you may have seen about optics so far in your physics studies is a bit different. You might see something like this. We've all seen this, right? There's a, there's a lens sitting here, there's an object, and what we're given is that there's an object, it's usually easy to draw, that's a distance D from the lens, and where is an image formed, whatever that is. And we know how to solve this, right? We have this lens uh, equation. Uh, we have the fact that uh, there's this one over F is equal to one over the object distance plus one over the image distance. If you haven't seen this already, we'll go over it quickly, so don't worry about it. But my point is this, this is very different from what you may be used to seeing um, outside, right? When you go around and look around, you don't see rays everywhere. You don't see lines and, and images being formed in points in space. So what, what's actually going on here? Well, what this actually means is that if you were to hold a, a piece of paper at where this image is formed here, you would actually see a pattern of uh, mimicking, in this case an upside down pattern, mimicking uh, the object that the light is being emitted from, right? But this leaves a lot to, 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 to explain, I think, does it not? What happens, for example, if we move the piece of paper? We have an intuition that maybe we'll see a blurry image, right? But, but what is the pattern that you're actually seeing? You're seeing light hit, uh, hit there. How do we mathematically describe that pattern you see anywhere away from the lens, right? That's one issue that could come up. Uh, there's also the fact that light is bouncing off this. Uh, if I have a piece of glass here, right? Here's a piece of glass. I can shoot a laser at it, another form of light. You can see that. And amount is, an amount is going to reflect, just like an amount is going to reflect off this lens here. But how much? How do you calculate how much is transmitted versus reflected? Right? We have to devise ways of calculating that. How much light is going to be bouncing back from here when I shoot it roughly at normal, inter, uh, normal incidence uh, here? We're going to see uh, that some light is bouncing back. We don't know how much yet, but you will soon. In a few weeks, you'll be able to tell me that that's about 4% of the light is bouncing back there, and we'll be able to calculate it. So we have a bit of work uh, cut out for us, understanding how to relate these diagrams with lenses and lines uh, to uh, what, we look when we, what we see when we look around us. I think we certainly don't see lines coming out of lights, although, <laughs> interestingly, there was a former theory of optics that said just that, but it was the other way around. It said that the theory of how your eyes work is that as soon as you open them, there's these invisible kind of feelers, rays that come out and kind of detect things this way. And it led to some pretty awesome uh, uh, demonstrations here. I don't exactly know what's going on here, but this is what uh, a demonstration of the emission theory of light. And here in this realistic diagram, there's people having their minds blown as their optical feelers are uh, looking at a dragon, it looks like. So uh, yeah. The, there are some, some interesting theories here, but I don't think this is what we see when we, we look outside. So how do we reconcile this with, with, our, with our growing understanding of physics um, and in a way that kind of captures the stuff that we know to be true, such as the image formation? And really what we're gonna do is we're gonna take three pictures of, of optics. We're gonna look at rays, uh, which is these lines of light, these pencils of light that come out. But that's not really the real thing, right? Because again, if light is made of, what is this stuff that light is made out of? And does it bounce off the lens in this case? How does it decide whether or not it wants to go through the lens or bounce off, right? So in order to answer that, to see what's really, really going on, we have to look a level deeper. And when we look a level deeper, we're gonna find that light is actually made of electromagnetic radiation. So it turns out that when, we're wig when charges get jiggled and wiggled around, uh, they emit uh, radiation. And what is that? It's a very, interesting but complicated picture. The basic idea is this, that everywhere around us, in space, there's an electro, uh, electric and a magnetic field, really just an electromagnetic field, uh, and it permeates everything. And if we somehow wiggle this, uh, this, this field, 
uh, it will support waves. Waves will propagate out, it turns out, at the speed of light. And those waves are what we call light, right? And we see pictures like this, but this is actually way too simple. This is a very complicated phenomenon. This is a 10-dimensional problem. 10 dimensions. Because there's three spatial dimensions, and at each point in space, there's three numbers needed to specify the electric field, and three additional numbers uh, needed to specify the magnetic field and time. So a 10D problem. I have trouble with three dimensions in my head sometimes. Four dimensions, it's pushing it. Uh, nine, 10 dimensions, forget about it. So this, this, this picture here is actually way less simple. If you move your hand around the room, imagine you're doing that. Every single point, x, y, z, you're gonna need six additional numbers to describe the magnitude and direction of the electric and the magnetic field. And that's the thing that's waving, that makes light. Incredibly complicated. So what we're gonna do, a large part of the first couple weeks of the course, is gonna be taking that picture, starting with the fundamentals of electromagnetism, and uh, seeing how they create waves, and then simplifying that picture so that we can reduce it to rays. But we can go back and look at it in terms of electromagnetic waves when we want to understand some physics, like what happens at the boundary of this microscope slide when, uh, when light hits it. We can actually just look at the fundamental uh, equations of electromagnetism and find out that, well, light's going to bend, some of it's going to reflect, and not only that, how much of it precisely is going to reflect. That's not the end, though. There's a more correct picture. And this is what we've just described, what you call classical optics, there is a uh, more modern and more correct theory called quantum field. It is a quantum field theory. It's called quantum electrodynamics. Uh, and that tells us that light is actually made, or rather light comes in packets of a fixed amount of energy. H times, uh, times the frequency, we'll get to there later. Uh, but really what it says is, um, no, no, it's not this electromagnetic field. It's an element of the wave function of the universe, I guess. And, uh, and we can isolate kind of the wave function, the quantum wave function of, of the optical field, of the electromagnetic field. And when we do that, when we quantize the electromagnetic field, the solutions emerge uh, that correspond to photons, little packets of light that behave kind of like particles. Often it's heard like, uh, was, what is light? Is it, a, is it a wave or a particle? Uh, no, it's neither. It's, uh, it's an element of the wave function, of the quantum wave function of the universe that behaves sometimes uh, in a way that we'd associate with particles and in a way that we'd associate with waves. This is a bit beyond uh, Physics 325, but we are gonna use a few basic results of it. We're gonna use the fact that there's photons, and we're also gonna try to hopefully at the end of the course get an intuition on, on why this actually predicts things like light. Um, so that is the idea, and that's kind of the picture we have for this course. I want to briefly go through just what we're going to cover um, sequentially. The very first thing we're going to do is the fundamentals. We're going to look at the very basic laws of electromagnetism, Maxwell's equation. There's four of them, and when we write them down and do a tiny bit of math, light just comes out. Uh, the fact that there's electromagnetic waves that move at C, the speed of light, falls directly out of Maxwell's equation. It's very beautiful, and we'll, we'll go through that in the first uh, week. And when we have that, we have this complicated multi-dimensional wave that's going everywhere. Uh, we gotta, we got to simplify that or our minds are going to blow. So what we do is we, we find uh, simple solutions to these, uh, to these waves called plane waves or spherical waves. And we, we note that we can use these simple solutions to build any kind of complicated uh, pattern that we want. But they themselves are very, very simple. In fact, they correspond one to one to these rays. All right, so once we've gotten that fundamental of how light propagates in free space and in matter, we're going to look at some of the phenomena of optics, the phenomenology. We're going to look at the fact that um, light's a wave, so it can interfere. We have interferometers. We have interference. We're going to look at the fact that um, uh, light travels at different speeds through different materials, and even different wavelengths uh, travel, uh, uh, correspond to different speeds. We're going to understand why that why that is the case as well on a really fundamental level. And uh, that's called uh, dispersion. That allows things like uh, rainbows and prisms to exist. Very neat stuff. We're also going to talk about, think about, well, we have a bunch of waves that are all together, not just one or two waves, but like 
Avogadro's number of waves, 10 to the 24 waves or something, and we add them all up, we almost have a continuum. We get a very complicated interference pattern, but we have a nice tool set to deal with that. Uh, that's diffraction. And it turns out, you may have seen something like this before, if I have a pattern of light and I look what happens far field, uh, like, sorry, far away, far down the field, I'm starting to use jar, uh, jargon already, uh, what we actually get is a Fourier transform of that, right? So we're going to look at what's called diffraction and diffraction theory. Finally, we're going to look at the fact that if light is going this way, it's wiggling perpendicular to that. In other words, not only is light a wave, but it is a transverse wave. And that leads to the phenomenon of polarization. It allows us to do neat things like buy fancy sunglasses that block the reflection from puddles on the wet road ahead of us, but not the cars coming towards us. So that's the phenomenon of polarization. We're going to get to uh, get to that a bit later. So that's the phenomenology. We're also going to talk about some of the instrumentation we build using that phenomenology. Very, very sensitive uh, measurement devices, interferometers. We're going to look at microscopes, uh, magnifying glasses, telescopes, uh, and, and maybe even some, some more sophisticated things like fiber uh, optical communication devices. Finally, the fourth part of the course is up to you guys. Light in optics is amazing. It's an emerging technology. There's so much crazy stuff that's being invented. We have uh, uh, imaging of exoplanets. We have quantum optics. We have fiber optic communication. Uh, we have uh, ultra, ultra high powered lasers that are looking at fusion reactions, making fusion reactions rather by concentrating the energy. So we have solar sails. We have uh, um, uh, advanced imaging, more, more advanced imaging, thermal imaging. Uh, there's, the sky is really the limit. There's so many cool uh, um, photonics. That's the, uh, the field here. There's so many different photonic applications. Photonics is kind of the, the field like electronics is using electrons. Photonics is technology using photons. Um, I could spend an hour just listing the table of contents, basically, uh, of that book. So what we're going to do is we'll send out a poll in the, uh, in the near future, and you guys get to vote on whatever you want me to teach, and I'll do my best to teach it. All right. Lastly, but not leastly, let's talk about how this course is actually going to be delivered, uh, the format. There's going to be three videos, uh, video lectures per week. I'm going to try to keep this down to an hour for all three. So it's going to be equivalent of a lecture per week uh, worth of videos. Uh, that's going to be on the weekend for the for the coming week. I'll release those. Um, there's going to be a video tutorial or tutorial, sorry, not a video, a live tutorial uh, on Wednesdays. We'll go through some problems and you know, kind of understand how to do the calculations. A lot of examples. We'll do that on uh, Wednesdays. Um, Fridays, I'm excited about this. Uh, you guys are going to teach part of the course, uh, for real. There's going to be presentations. You only have to do one for the whole semester. Uh, but the rest of the time, you'll be listening to your peers. Uh, and it's going to be a video presentation over Zoom. So you can do a demonstration, for example. Um, I didn't know I had these here. Uh, looking at uh, eclipses with pinhole cameras, uh, looking at Snell's law, things like that. You can do a demonstration or you can do a mini talk explaining something. Uh, well, there's topics that you get to select from. If you really want to do your own thing, that's cool. But, uh, but I'll give you enough stuff that you can work on. You work in groups of three and only the week that you're presenting, you'll meet with me on Tuesday and we'll make sure that everything's caught up to speed. Uh, there'll be a weekly quiz. These quizzes are nothing to be stressed out about. You get infinitely many tries. Uh, you can keep doing them and entering answers until you get it right. right. The whole purpose of this is just to kind of get you thinking about the course, uh, uh, thinking about the week's material at the end of the week, just as a way to summarize it. Uh, there'll be one per week, accepting the dates that there are tests, and there will be three tests, no final, uh, three tests once every four weeks, and each test will just be the previous three or four weeks. It will not cover any of the material from the previous test. Um, and uh, that was the wrong bullet. That's what I was just talking about, tests. Uh, there will also be six assignments. Um, uh, they'll have about four questions each. The first one is up already. So that's it. I'm looking forward to meeting you all in the Tuesday sessions and seeing your presentations on Friday and hopefully on the Wednesday tutorials. Please just let me know if there are any questions or if you want something to do with the course. In the, after about a month of the course, I would really like to send out a quick survey um, just to see how things are going and whether or not there's something we can do to uh, make the course a bit more palatable. Very, looking, very much looking forward to this course, and I will see you all um, soon.